my first proper vlog on this channel. Um, as you can tell by the title, I am going to tell you about my very, very horrible one of having a gearbox problem with my Vector. Um, I'm off to go and sort my phone out with EE. E. Um, so, on the way there, I'm going to tell you uh, what happened to the car. Now my fan, I don't know if you can hear it. Ooh, dear. Sounds like Chewbacca. Um, that will quieten down. Wait a minute. It just sounds like that initially when it's cold because it's dry. But when I drive off, it'll quieten down. So, my gearbox problem. What happened to my gearbox? I was driving down to Chester in Broughton, right? Uh, I was going with a few of my friends, just having a nice casual drive down there. And the drive down there was actually quite nice. He even said to my friend, you know, that was probably the best drive I've had in a while with this car. Famous last words, I'd say. So, we had that drive, went down to McDonald's. We pulled up. And my friend said to me, what's that weird noise coming from your car? I was like, what weird noise? He says to me, he says it's making a squeaking noise every time you move. He said, oh, that must be the brakes. So, I went off to go and uh, drive off to see if I could find out if it was the brakes or not, because it was concerning me. Because I've never had a squeak for the brakes much. It's always usually a grumble. So... I drove off with all my windows open and I found out that it was making a weird noise. It was, I don't know if I've still got a video of it, I should do, but it was like when you were in the car, it sounded like a turbo winding up. But it wasn't the case, it was like a... <laughs> ah, fuck, don't turn that into a meme. <laughs> yeah, so it sounded really odd. Um, so obviously we tended to investigate. And we then found out that, that it was the gearbox making the noise. So, whilst it was still drivable to a degree, which it wasn't because it was, it was, it was ended up pulling the driver of the car. So I was driving and it wouldn't allow me to move properly. A bit like having a flat tire. That's how it felt like. Um, so I looked on eBay for a gearbox. And I got a gearbox. I asked my friend if he can, if, if he can fit it for me. I won't mention his name. Um, but I asked him if he could fit it for me and he said, yeah, not a problem, I'll sort it for you. So he was with me at the time when I bought the gearbox, he also looked over the same link for the gearbox I paid 140 quid for. It wasn't a brand new gearbox, it was a gearbox from a Mariva with the same code as the one that this had, which is F17, because it's a 5 speed. Um, and it ended up coming from a Mariva that only did 88,000 miles. At the time, my car's just clocked 90,000, so I thought, right, so that must be the right sort of gearbox for this car. And when we got the gearbox, it came into two boxes, it was from Ireland. And at this time, I was anxious, because I was taking the car down to his, and I had to tow it there. Well, I was debating whether to tow it there. It could move, but I was very cautious of it being moved. So anyways, it got to my friend's house, and we, well, we tried to take it out of the gearbox. Now obviously my friend was busy, he overbooked himself with stuff, so my car was waiting out his for quite a long time. And uh, it was about oh, two weeks after I bought the gearbox, we actually finally started doing something, or oh, it was a week after. Um, 
we took the, the old gearbox out. The gear linkage was knackered. <laughs> um, but the thing is though, is I didn't do anything to the gear linkage. I always knew the gear linkage was a bit funny because it was making a weird clacking sound the day I bought the car. Um, which I was told was just the gear selector, which is what it was. And he said not to worry about it when, the, the, when I bought the car. So, we took all that out. I've got some footage of me and my friend putting a, a fag inside of the, uh, the gearbox as a last goodbye to that gearbox because we thought, wow, we'll just have a, have a laugh. You could see loads of shrapnel. Loads and loads and loads and loads of thin pieces of metal everywhere in that gearbox. The gearbox had completely disintegrated. Now I was, I was, I found out what caused the gearbox to self-combust, and apparently all the bearings in the gearbox uh, in the gearbox decided to, uh, to, in mechanical terms, shit themselves. <laughs> So we ended up putting the uh, the new gearbox I paid for in the car, and it was fine. I paid my mate a hundred quid for fixing up well, putting the gearbox in for me, and happy days. I drove off. I was happy. I was like, yes, this is it. This is the end. We managed to reuse a thrust bearing as well. Uh, from the old gearbox so for happy days I can get to work because obviously I was I had to get I had to find lifts for a week which was the biggest pain in my backside because I mean I had to rely on other people which I do not like doing um, so after this I drove for two hours and then I lost all pressure in the clutch pedal I had no clutch immediately I thought right okay so I've got a leak somewhere so I looked under the car and yes I had a bad leak and it was coming from the uh, bell housing which wasn't good because that meant I can't use the car otherwise I'll end up damaging the clutch and this clutch I'm still using today this clutch has survived three gearboxes I haven't got to the third gearbox yet damn shit I've mentioned myself too early um, so I'll get back onto that in a second. So I ended up going to my friend again and asking him, saying, oh, my car won't move. I can't get it into gear. I can't get it out of gear. There is no clutch. There's no pressure on it. It's completely gone. So we ended up getting a bleeder on it or a, an easy bleeder, which consists of you having this little bottle filled with brake fluid and put it towards well, put it one end to a tyre where there's pressure and the rest of it to the uh, bleeding nipple and also to the reservoir where the brake fluid sits um, and we ended up sorting that out and that got me to work the next day and it got me home thank god um, but I kept the easy, bleed, easy bleeder with me so that if it did happen when I was in work, uh, I could always sort myself out. Now I ended up getting home and that was fine, but then it came to the point where I couldn't be bothered doing that again, so I ended up leaving it at home, otherwise I'd end up damaging the car. Now, we found out what it was, and we found out with the thrust bearing we put on, uh, it's got like a hose on it. It's got like a, a, a copper hose. Now I apologise if this is vibrating a lot on the phone, uh, I am on the motorway and my car does vibrate a little bit. Um, <laughs> so I ended up, well, how can you put it? I ended up changing the thrust bearing completely because there's parts of the, the, the parts of the, uh, the pipe that we snapped off whilst changing the gearbox. Now, we had another obstacle. This was like, this is like now two weeks since the gearbox decided to shit itself. A mate of mine said that I could do it outside his because my other mate uh, said he wasn't allowed to do any more work outside of his house. So I thought, fair enough, but how do I get there? Because I have no clutch pedal, all I've got is a brake. It's out of gear, 
that's great. But how do I get it out there? So I found another mate of mine. <laughs> and he had a 1.1 Citroen Saxo. And he was able to tow this car with a 1.1 Saxo from New Broughton, which is where I live. I'm not going to say exactly where I live, but from New Broughton, from where I live, down to Worsalt, where my other friend lives. Now, the person who fixed or well, fitted the gearbox in for me, he also went to my other friend's in Worsalt to uh, to sort the thrust bearing out. So he put a new thrust bearing in. We didn't do it properly, we had to keep the gearbox in. Um, but other than that, it, it was fine. We lent it in, we put it on, and we put it back together, and well, I was able to be, I was able to be moved, I was, I was breathing. Now, with that gearbox, I found something else out as well, well I forgot, I've forgotten to mention it already. When I was having that gearbox fitted, I lost my rag, because I had a phone call from a friend saying that it stuck, it, it, it seized. And I said to him, what do you mean it seized? He said, it will not go into gears. Some of the gears, it won't work in. And that was because when I bought the gearbox, the guy didn't tell me that it was already shifted into reverse to take the thing out of the other, the donor car. So when I had the box, it was in reverse. So we put it in, thinking it was neutral, into reverse. And obviously it went haywire with some of the gears. Now, that gearbox was a tank. That was a good gearbox. There was no wrong with that, other than fourth gear vibrated when you put your foot down. So, moving on. We put the new thrust bearing on, and there was still a leak coming from the bell housing which indicated to us that it was a seal that was gone. To get the gearbox out of reverse, we had to split the gearbox to enable us to put it back into neutral, because we couldn't put it into neutral whilst it was in the car. And by doing that, we thought we slit the seal. slit a seal, we thought, right, okay, it's going to be cheaper to change the box again. Because we put a new thrust bearer on it, so it cannot be that. I mean, I had all the clutch pedal there now. I, mean, I, got, I regained my clutch, which was handy. <laughs> so, I was a little bit upset, and I said, right, mate, look, sorry, I know you helped me out with my, my, my gearbox, but I'm going to go to someone who has a proper garage and, and sort it for me. Because at this point I've already spent 140 quid for the gearbox and I already spent a, an extra 140 quid on getting myself to work via someone else's um, time. And that in, inside that as well, that 100 quid went to my friend to fit the gearbox. Uh, and I paid 20 quid for him to fit the thrust bearing. And the rest of it was just me getting to work. Now this is now into our third week. I had an upcoming problem. The MOT for the car was due in the next week I had four springs well I needed four springs I had two springs that were snapped one on the front one on the back probably down to a pothole because they were both on the same side I had to change those springs for it to pass MOT it would pass with the gearbox having a slight oil leak so I had to take it to the MOT first so I asked my other friend fitted the gearbox for me, and he booked me an MOT. And he ends up not booking the MOT for me and seeing his backside with me. Because apparently I panicked too much. 
but understandably I haven't had a car for three weeks and I've got an MOT upcoming of course I'm going to be stressed of course I'm going to be worried of course I want things done now 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 I want my car back so I ended up not having an MOT and when I went to my friend my other friends who has the garage a proper garage with the lift he inspected the car and said the car's sound there's no wrong with the car other than the springs and the gearbox everything else is fine your exhaust flexes a little bit on the way out but it should pass your MOT so went to the MOT centre after I changed the springs and it passed but the car ran out of MOT for two days I had no MOT for two days which annoyed the taxman obviously because he thought the car's not running anymore but no the car was it's just a problem with the MOT. So after this, we went to go and find a cheap gearbox to do me by. In which case, I found the gearbox which is in this now. And I've run it for at least 4,000 miles now because I've done 94,168 miles. Um, and that's out of an Astra H5 door 1.6. Not the best gearbox for this car, but it's still got the same code F17. Um, I mean, this gearbox is coping pretty fine with what I'm doing with it. it the, the ratio is different for obvious reasons, but in terms of the workings of it, it's exactly the same. Uh, it might have done a lot more mileage than this car, I'm not sure, but it's doing its job perfectly fine, so I'm happy. Now we took the other gearbox out, the Mariva gearbox that I put in, and we found out why it was leaking and why we broke it. When we put the thrust bearing on, there was a little seal that my mate forgot to put on, which I lost my rag through that. There was an O-ring on the thrust bearing at the back that was supposed to stop the oil coming out of the gearbox which we never put on and of course this ruined my £140 gearbox that I paid for so I spent 140 quid, 60 quid also for a thrust bearing for that gearbox plus 100 quid to pay him and 30 quid for the thrust bearing so 130 quid to pay him For him to have forgotten to put a seal on for me and have to scrap that gearbox because it ended up being ruined. I had to pay 60 quid for this gearbox. I mean, I could have paid a lot less for the other gearbox, but it was being shipped from Ireland and it was the right gearbox for this car, if not better. I lost out 400 quid that month because of a gearbox problem. That's why I'm calling it my gearbox nightmare. It took me an entire month to get this car running again. And 400 quid worth. The benefit of having my car off the road though meant that I was able to save money in fuel. Because I normally typically spend 200 a month in fuel. Hence why I'm still on the road and I'm not in big trouble but even so me and my friend we kind of had an argument about this uh, which we're okay with now so I don't want any drama going on you know everything's okay everyone's happy now you know I'm happy the car's still running and it's running really well to be fair to it but that was my gearbox nightmare I'm still running the same gearbox now, but when I had that O-ring missing, it was always my gearbox was running low on oil all the time, and I had to fill, refill the gearbox up at least six times on my own using a Pepsi bottle and a straw to fill it up for the inspection hole. Now. 
obviously it's a learning curve. I know never to break a gearbox. <laughs> but I also have learned not to think cheaply and get it done properly is what I need to do. So, right now I'm going to sort my phone with EE. And the reason why is because I believe I am going to be overcharged because I changed my phone. Which I shouldn't be because I thought everything I have done, I've already paid for. So. I am now going to sort that. And I will be back with you in a minute. Guys, I am back. I have finally sorted out the issue with my phone. So now uh, I'm going to pop to my work and see if I can grab my payslip. So now you're going to watch me drive home on my dash cam. Enjoy. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed listening to me rambling on for half an hour or so. Anyways guys, if you liked this video, please subscribe and like this video as well as subscribe on the subscribe button that is about to appear on your screens. And I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers guys!